Reminder, God's going to come through this time, and God's going to come through every time. Hallelujah. If we'll just keep trusting Him. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Will you stand with us? And we're going to open this service with prayer. And then Brother Rick's going to be coming to lead us in worship through song tonight. And I just want the Holy Ghost to move upon us. That's what I've been praying for. You know, and let's pray together. Father, I am so thankful for your love, your grace, and mercy. I'm so thankful, God, that you care. God, I am. Lord, if it had not been for you, then Lord, where would we be? I'm telling you, God, that we need the Holy Ghost. And I pray that tonight will be that night that the sweet presence of God will fill this place. God, you will minister to every heart that has come. Lord, it doesn't matter to you if it's physical, spiritual, financial. God, sometimes, Lord, it seems like that our mind and God needs to be overhauled. Whatever it may be, you are God. You're, you're God tonight. You are Jehovah Jireh. You are God, our provider. And Lord, we look unto you. And I know that you're reaching down into the homes. And you're reaching down, Lord, into the hospitals. And you're reaching down, to God, into the rehabs. And you're touching people tonight. And I thank you for it. Lord, will you just move tonight and, and, and heal these people. And Father in heaven, we'll fail not to give you the praise, the glory, and honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. As Brother Rick comes, let me ask you to be praying for uh, Brother Simmons. That God will just really reach down and touch him. He, he just needs God to heal his body. Uh, he really does. He has a doctor's appointment. I, he told me on the 25th. Uh, but he needs God to really reach down and touch him. So really pray for Brother Simmons. Uh, we're going to sing out of our uh, songs we love to sing, page 208, Living by Faith. I care not today what tomorrow may bring, if shadow or sunshine or rain, the Lord I know who before everything is all.
knows his will obey. He, your Savior, wants to be the same today. Love lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me. Send him from heaven above yes. to down yes. an old rugged right. cross for you and I. Yes. That's real love, isn't it? Amen. Thank God for that real genuine love tonight. Yes. It's so good to have you with us tonight in the house of the Lord. And I just thank God for all of his blessings. Yes. Amen. Man, he's brought us back together safe and sound. And we just have so much to be thankful for tonight. Amen. We want to continue to worship the Lord at this time through our giving. We have some ushers that come and help us out here tonight. And let's just... Give as giving unto God. Oh, I tell you, I, I look up and I see the goodness of God and I realize that God is good to me all the time. Amen. Amen. God's a lot better to me than I have been to Him. Amen. Right? How many of you know that? Amen. Amen. God's a lot more faithful to me than what I've been faithful to Him. Oh, Lord, God is thank faithful. You, Lord. Thank God for that. Brother Rick, will you pray for us tonight? Heavenly Father, Lord, too often we take you for granted, Lord. We take your blessings and your grace in our lives, oh Lord, and we forget about your goodness. So Lord, I just pray tonight, Lord, you remind us of where you brought us from and where you picked us up yes, when we were down. And Father, you, you deserve all of, that we have in life. Lord, our, our life, our attention, our love, our finances, Lord, everything belongs to you, Lord. I just pray that you'll take these offerings, Lord, that you'll just do a work with them that will lift up Jesus, will save souls, and will bring the light of the, of the world uh, to the eyes of the darkness. We praise you, we love you, and we thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Upside down, flip it up. Right. How many of you know that's the sign? Right. Amen. right? Don't expect the waitress to come along and flip your cup up. You got to flip your cup up. But if you flip your cup up, she'll pour something in. There you go. Come on, Amen. help me out tonight. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Let me remind you, and I am so thankful for those of you that have been bringing things in for our Thanksgiving uh, food drive baskets. And I know that Sister Frieda, Brother Henry, they are too. But uh, that time is, is swiftly coming up on us. And so uh, anyone and everyone that can help out, we have two small freezers uh, right now that we can start filling up. And uh, God will help us. Well, then if we need more, the Lord will provide. Uh, once again, there's some folks that don't like a great big turkey. Some of them would like to have a, a chicken instead. So turkeys, chicken, hams, any of that stuff. And... Uh, once again, pick up one of these. They've been coming in the bulletin. There's also some laying out in the foyer. 
And that way it, it helps them to distribute evenly to these families and we can uh, help them out with this. This coming Saturday evening from 5 to 7 here at the church is going to be our fall festivities. And we're asking God to help us to reach so many people. And uh, those of you that are supposed to be working on your indoor booth, make sure that you've got with Sister Mary. Uh, and then uh, Saturday morning about 10 o'clock, we're going to be around here trying to get a lot of the final stuff put together and hoping everything will be ready to, to roll on and, and we're going to do some great things for God and reach out to a lot of different people. I want to encourage you to keep praying. This has been our mission month. Uh, God has blessed us. Brother Turner, I'm going to tell you that man fed me and uh, preached the word of God. And then uh, we, we've had Brother Peoples. We've had Brother David Fields. And then... Uh, I called him Brother Francisco, and I found out after the service Sunday night, and that's how he was introduced to me, Javier Francisco, but his last name was Philip Honey. So uh, I'm glad I was calling him Francisco, right? But I'm going to tell you, that man ministered. Sunday morning, he preached one of the best, most simple salvation messages. And I want to tell you, if you had any misunderstanding with that message, well, then you just need to ask God to turn on your hearing aid or something. I'm telling you, but thank God. And we've got to keep praying, church. Oh, we've got to keep praying. I pick up the bulletin. You'll see some of the things going on in there. But to just tell you that we, can't do, we cannot do anything without praying. We cannot do it. Hallelujah. Just a few moments. Sister Rita's going to be coming to sing for us. And then Brother Rick's going to be singing for us tonight. Can I, can I ask you to help me pray? I, I done something today that I normally don't do. And that was I went through the Church of God news where that they begin to talk about the, the churches and where that they're averaging today. And I want to tell you this, stirred my heart as I began to look at a lot of the churches that was once running 150 to 200 people and tonight they're only running 16 and 20 people. I'm telling you, we need God to move in our churches. I'm telling you, we need God to move in our churches. We need God to move right here. I'm not praying and saying, God, send us people from all these other churches. There's so many people out here that are lost, and they need Jesus Christ. Amen. I think the church needs to go back, and let's do what Christ has called us to do, and that is to reach the lost. Right? Reach the Amen. lost. I understand that, that there's folks that have come here and said, Pastor, you know, I, I haven't really been getting spiritually fed. I'm not turning nobody away. And I'm telling you, the purpose and the goal of our church should be God help us to reach every lost person. Help us, God, to win the lost. That should be the cry of our heart. Come on, Sister Reba, we're going to worship the Lord with you tonight. How about looking at that person next to you or around you there and you say, thank God you're in church tonight. Jesus, something o'er me stole. When I first found Jesus, something o'er me stole. Like lightning it went through me, and glory filled my soul. Salvation made me happy.
some of those churches turn to methods to try to bring people back. I think, brother, uh, I'm not sure what one of the preachers talked about that. Where, when you bring them in with something, they're going to stay for what you bring them in. I think some of them are going to turn to worldly pursuits to try to fill seats. And that's going to be even sadder, I think. So uh, I shouldn't have said anything before you preach, but it's just the Lord stirred me about that. Oh, I tell you, we need God to stir us, don't we? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I think back to uh, what Brother Turner was also talking about. And he said that God had let him know that in these last days that God was going to raise up people in the church. Yes. And these people would have special gifts of God. They would not make merchandise of the gospel. Amen. But God would use them to minister and minister greatly. Yes. I want to be one of those folks. Yes. Amen. Amen. I just want to be one of those people that God can use. And I want God to use me. That's what I was praying before the service tonight, Lord. I just want you to use me. Use me, Jesus. Use me. I'm going to ask you tonight to go with me to the book of Psalms, chapter 73. And I, I really want God to touch us tonight. I, I really do. I, I find so many people that have become discouraged, uh, they're battling depression, anxieties, uh, so many things. And I want to tell you, God's still God. 
Amen. You understand what I'm trying to tell you tonight? God is still God. Yes, He is. And I believe with all my heart that God has given to me this message. And I want to share with you some of the things that I feel like God has just put into my heart this evening. In Psalm 73, in verse 1, Truly God is good to Israel, even to such as are of a clean heart. When you read this first verse, you're thinking, Lord, we are about to have revival. This guy is, he is just starting off with a great praise. He's talking about how good God is. But look at verse number two. But as for me, my feet were almost gone. My steps had well nigh slipped. For I was envious at the foolish when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. For there are no bands in their death but their strength is firm. You know what he's saying? There's, there's no pains in their death. It looks like they've got it easy all the way up to the very time they die. He said they are not in trouble as other men. Neither are they plagued like other men. Therefore pride can pass them about as a chain. Violence covereth them as a garment. Their eyes stand out with fatness. They have more than their heart could wish. They are corrupt and speak wickedly concerning oppression. They speak lawfully. They set their mouth against the heavens and their tongue walketh through the earth. Therefore his people return hither and waters of a full cup are wrung out to them. And they say, how doeth God know? Is there knowledge in the Most High? And what a, what a powerful thought that people could ever get to the place to where they're saying, how does God even know? Mm -hmm. they're, they're looking at God like he has no knowledge and everything's all right. Behold, these are the ungodly who prosper in the world. They increase in riches. Verily, I have cleansed my heart in vain. Be careful. Be careful. Here the psalmist is saying, wait a minute, I pray through in vain. I try to live a sanctified life in vain. I try to live like God wants me to, but it's all in vain. I've washed my hands in innocence. For all the day long have I been plagued and chastened every morning. If I say I will speak thus, behold, I should offend against the generation of thy children. When I thought to know this, it was too painful for me. And I like verse 17. Until I went into the sanctuary of God, yes, then understood I therein. Father, I praise you, I love you, I worship you for you are God tonight. And there is none, Lord, like unto you. I'm asking for the anointing of God to fill this house. I'm asking you to strengthen your people that we may strengthen others. God, we're not just coming tonight asking you, Lord, to give us something to help us to survive. God, we're asking you to give us something to help others to survive. For God, we want the anointing of God to flow through us to touch other hearts and lives. Yes. Father, I'm asking you to open my eyes tonight and let me see spiritual things I've never seen before. Yes. God, through your word and through your spirit, I just pray for an overwhelming power of God to fill this house. And God, that your people will leave this place tonight being charged in your word and in your presence. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hallelujah. Before I really get into the message, there, there's a couple of things that I want to do here to kind of lay a little foundation. One thing is I, I was watching some preachers on YouTube this past week and I really got upset with one. Can you imagine that? But this guy was talking about he had a man come to him and told him he said, I cuss. The preacher looked at him and said, so? He said, I cuss too. He said, I cuss in English and then I speak in tongues. And I thought, oh my God, I don't know why, God, that you don't just strike him dead. Now that, that was me thinking. And you, you know, we, we've got people out there today that will tell you anything that you want to hear. But I, I want to tell you that there is a walk that we can have with God that brings about power. Amen. To worry that we can resist the devil. We're not going along with him, but we can resist him. Amen. Right? Yes. We, we don't have to be part of him. In fact, we can be 
Christ. Yeah. We should belong to Christ, haven't we? Amen. And so before I really get started in this, I, and this is something I feel like God just gave me a prayer just before this service. Are we willing to pay the price to really fulfill the destiny in Christ that we should be willing to fulfill? What, I, what I'm seeing today is a lot of people that are so easily discouraged until they're not willing to fight for a blessing. They're not willing to fight for the anointing. They, they just want God to give it all to them on a silver platter. But let me ask you, what would you do if you was like Joseph and God in your young age of serving him, he begins to show you all these great visions. Okay? What God did not show him was what he would have to go through before that vision would be fulfilled in his life. And God did not meet with Joseph along the way to just go back and reiterate and say, remember what I showed you. It's never recorded in there. But Joseph had to hold on to something. He had to hold on to something. And Joseph knew that he had a dream. He knew that he had a vision. But what he did not know was the price tag on that. Are we willing to pay the price tag for it? Now I started thinking about Joseph because how easily he could have not just been discouraged because I believe that he, he battled discouragement. How easily he could have quit, gave up. But instead, whenever his brother should have been celebrating with him, and he thought that the family would just love him and honor him and, and come, you know, and bow before him. He finds his brothers hate him. They sell him into slavery. He goes to Potiphar's house and it looks like there's a little ray of sunshine. And then boom, there is a woman's heart full of lust and adultery. She starts chasing after him. And there's a valuable lesson to learn there. Are you listening to me? Amen. It's better to go to jail than to go to hell. Amen. Come on. Amen. Right. It's better to go to jail than it is to go to hell. And that's what happened in, in Joseph's life. He said, man, I'd rather be in trouble with the government than I would be in trouble with God. And so he leaves his coat behind and he flees. Well, it looks like there's a little ray of hope in the prison. But then it seems like that Ray of hope is taken away. And I, I want you to understand about Joseph. Joseph continued to serve God. Joseph continued to look for an opportunity to use the gift that God had given unto him. Amen. Even in jail. Right. Right. And whenever everybody else might have forgotten about him, he would not let God forget about him. Amen. Amen. Oh, help us tonight, sweet Holy Ghost. There's some of us needs to go back and remind God. Oh, brothers, family, God knows where I'm at. That's right. But sometimes you need to ring those prayer bells of heaven yes. one Amen. more time. Amen. And what I like about this, and I've not been able to get it out of my mind, what Brother Francisco was talking about, that as the armor of the Lord is all upon us, and he said it's not upon the back. But then I started thinking about Joseph looked like at times he was backing up instead of going forward. But do you know the proper way to sit down into a chair? You turn around and you back up to it before you sit down. Right? right? He, was, he had to back up in order to get to the proper chair where that God wanted him to go to. But he never gave up on God. Amen. And I started thinking about Daniel. Daniel is another man. If you was to look at him and say, how can God ever use him? How can the destiny that God had put in this man's life ever be fulfilled? After all, now he is a prisoner of war, but even as a prisoner of war, he would maintain his integrity with God. He would walk uprightly, and he would live uprightly, and he would serve God with all of his heart. And he would not eat of the king's food. And in fact, here's what I love about this story. God not only blessed him physically, God also blessed him spiritually, and God also blessed him mentally, because these men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and Daniel, uh, they were wiser than the other men. They were smarter than the other men. They were, they, they were blessed because that God 
came was upon them even as they were prisoners of war. I cannot tell you how God does it, but once again, God would bring them from a place of, of captivity and begin to put them in the palace of a king. Only God can do that. And only God wants to remind you tonight that he knows where you're at. He knows where he's wanting to take you. But you've got to be faithful unto God. Faithfulness is going to pay off. And when I started looking at him, the Bible said that Daniel was made to be the first of the three presidents. If you go back and really study that out, there were three presidents there that were supposed to have uh, equal power, equal authority. But God gave him such favor until he was the first of, of the three presidents. Uh, did not God bring him back into the presence of Nebuchadnezzar? Was he not able to speak to the king with the power and the authority of God? And God honored his word. Amen. And when it looks like that he's old and forgotten, uh, God brings him back into the palace with Belshazzar. And he says, thus saith the Lord. I'm going to tell you only God can bring you out of captivity and put you into the palace of the king and where the king is looking at you and saying what do you have to say for I hear that God speaks through you I don't know about you tonight but I want God to use me and I often ask God to use me but tonight I started wondering John Spratlin Jr are you willing to pay the price for God to use you God to use you there's Joseph there's Daniel. What about David? David had the anointing all poured upon him. And just because you have that anointing upon you does not exempt you from the devil. It does not exempt you from attacks. But there is one thing you have to remind yourself of because that devil will do everything he can to destroy your remembrance of, of what God has spoken unto you. He was anointed king. How many times was he on the run? How many times was he thinking, uh, maybe just maybe Samuel missed it. After all, he's getting a little old in age. Uh, and maybe, uh, maybe I, I misunderstood. I'm telling you, that's the way the devil will work on my mind and upon your mind. No, no, no. You just thought that was God talking to you. Uh, or maybe uh, or maybe you, you start thinking, well, God's changed his mind. Friend, God's not changed his mind. God is preparing you and I to be something uh, that we cannot be within ourselves, uh, but yet he has to uh, work ourselves out of the way so that he can put himself in power, in control, and in leadership in our life. Because we can't get there. We cannot get there. We cannot do it within ourselves. This is within the Lord Jesus Christ. It is Him working in us. It is Him working through us. Because the task is too great. The ministries are too great. The responsibilities are overwhelming. And so God is simply saying, if you lift your vessel out and let me put myself inside of you, then I can take you to the places that I desire. But are we willing to pay the price? Because David had to live on the run. He had to live in caves. He had to run and hide. Even after God anointed him to bring down the giant. But can I tell you this? Because he was found faithful unto God. Did not God fight the battle for David? Did he not put him upon the throne? Did he not establish his royalties and his, and, and, and his ability to lead? I'm telling you, God did it. And look what happened because David was found faithful unto God. God and he had been through his discouraging times uh, and he refused to quit and he refused to give up. Now he is a leader in Israel and he's telling them friend uh, there's more giants out there to be conquered uh, but we're not going to conquer them by staying here let's mount up and let's go out there and the Philistines still belong to the almighty God and we're not going to be bound by man. We're not going to be bound by an army. Uh, no, no, no. We're not going to be bound by another nation because who God has set free they are free indeed and we need to understand that the power of warfare is not within our power it is the power of an almighty God Amen. that's the only way that's the only way I, I, I'm not even on my outline don't get nervous about that but I want you to see something with me I want you to see where David is at right now 
I want you to see where that where, where that where that this, this psalmist he is he, he's at the place of of despair. I mean, he is he's being cast down and and everything else and 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 you can ask the question why. And whenever you really start looking at it, I believe that the last chapter, the previous chapter, the seventy second chapter, and the last verse kind of gives you an insight of what is going on. Because he said the prayers of David, the son of Jesse, are ended. When we get off of our knees, that's when we start seeing everything that this psalmist began to see. When we get off of our knees and we start looking at what the enemy has, what the ungodly possess, and then we start feeling sorry for ourselves. Come on. Shame on. Amen. Whenever we get off of our knees, we get more concerned about other people mm. instead of our relationship with God. Lord help. And it's, when we get off of our knees, then we start seeing all the blessings that other people have, and we cannot see the blessings God has given unto us. True? Right. I'm telling you tonight, God wants us to stay upon our knees. Amen. If you don't stay up on your knees, then you can look around and say, God, it looks like everybody else is being blessed. And it looks like everybody else is prospering. It looks like everybody else is having a prayer answered. And God, look at me. I'm over here on Skid Row. I'm over here in Poverty City. I'm over here, Lord. Woe is me. Woe is me. Woe is me. I got to talking to little Jane the other day. His mama had told him she said, when I can, I'm going to give you $20. And you tell a little eight-year-old, a little seven-year-old kid that they're going to get $20, and I'm telling you, they get a list together. Oh, yes. What all they're going to buy. And I try to tell him, no, you can't, because, man, he's talking about buying things like trucks and boats and, and all that stuff. And oh, so you, you can't even go buy a toy boat. Am I telling you the truth? Amen. And, and I, I started looking at him. I said, Jaden, I said, there's a lot of kids in that if they just had $3, they'd go buy all the rice that they could. Yeah, that's right. Huh? So yeah, they wouldn't be buying no toy. That's right. They're hungry. Mm -hmm. They'd be buying all the rice they could. And I said, Jaden, whenever they got a hold of that rice, they wouldn't take it all home and cook it at one time. And he's really looking at me. I watched the little fella eat. And I can guarantee you that he's thinking that he can eat ten dollars of rice. That's right. And there, there was just something about it. You know, he wants his plate full. And then he says, Don't throw it away. Put it right up here in the microwave. I'll come back in a little bit. That's right. Yeah. And I want to tell you, whenever I tried to explain to him that there's some people out there that would spend all that money on food. It was hard for him to comprehend. Can I tell you that sometimes that we are as children are. Because we begin to look at everything else that everybody else possesses. And then we forget how much God has already given unto us. How many of you can raise your hands tonight and say, Thank God I have food on my table. I have a place to lay my head tonight. Amen. I have shoes on my feet. I have decent clothes on my back. I have been blessed. Amen. I've got a place that I can get a shower. I've got a place where that I can cook. I've got a place that has an extra blanket and maybe even an extra pillow. Don't you understand? I realize that there are palaces with multiple rooms in it. And my friend, they have the best of the bedding there, but nobody's in in those rooms. But I'm not going to look at the palace that is empty. I want to say thank God for what I have. I want to say thank God for his blessings upon me. I want to say thank God because he is faithful to supply my every need. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Help me tonight church. Listen to me. We are in a warfare. We're in a struggle. 
And I'm telling you right now that the devil does not want you to see your victory. The only thing he wants you to do is look at your defeat. And that's exactly what happened unto this psalmist. He started wanting to look up, look at everything else. But it's a danger to get your eyes off of Jesus. You've got to keep your eyes up on the Lord. Can I take you back to Brother Peter just for a moment? Because as long as Peter kept his eyes on Jesus, he was able to walk on the water. And as long as you and I keep our eyes upon Jesus, there is nothing impossible and there is nothing improbable. But you have to keep your eyes upon the Lord Jesus Christ. But it's when he took his eyes off of Jesus, he began to sink and he cried out. And the Lord had mercy and he picked him up. And some of you may be saying, preacher, that's what's wrong. I got my eyes off of Jesus. I want to tell you, he has mercy and he'll reach over and pick you up tonight. And the second thing is this. Whenever Peter started looking at John instead of Jesus, Jesus had to rebuke him and bring him back into line. Amen. You know, God doesn't want me to look over here at Brother Russ and compare myself to him. He doesn't want me to compare myself to Brother Gavin. He doesn't want me to compare myself to Brother Will. No, God made me to be unique. He made me to be the vessel that He made me to be. And all that I need to do is keep my eyes upon Jesus and help you to keep your eyes upon Jesus and not try to fulfill the things that I desire, but I say by the help of the grace of God, let's go forward and let's win the battles for the Lord Jesus Christ and let God be given all the glory, all the honor, and all all the praise for the things that are accomplished in our life. How many of you know that God's given unto you power? Amen. And a lot of people don't realize that tonight. Amen. They don't realize that tonight, but I'm telling you, God's given unto you power. What kind of power is He given unto me? Trained upon serpents and scorpions and over all the powers of the all the powers of the devil. That's right. Yeah. God's given unto you and I the power. I love the words of that song that talks about the church and says that, that we've got the power in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 One of those verses says, give me your hand. Let's agree together. I believe it's time for the church to come back into agreement one more time. Amen. Don't you? Yes. I've been reading right back through the book of, the, uh, of Ezekiel. And whenever that he begins to talk about that king of Tyre and, he, and he's talking about Satan and he talks about how that he is going to be brought down, brought low. You see, the devil wants to stand in front of you tonight and say, look at me, I'm all aglow. Oh, no, you're not, devil. Uh, no, you're not. It's Jesus Christ. He is the one that has all the glory. And devil, you have been put up underneath of our feet. Uh, you don't belong up here whispering in my ear. You don't belong on my shoulder. You don't belong on my back. You belong up underneath of my feet. And the Lord said, I give unto you power to tread upon the serpents, the scorpions, and over all the powers of the enemy. And why not, why not go and look a little bit further? Because this is what Jesus said unto the believers. He said, these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. Come on, church. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. If they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. The Lord has given unto you and I the power. The disciples came back with rejoicing uh, and praising the Lord and said, Lord, even the spirits are subject unto us through thy name. And the Lord told them, said, well, don't just rejoice over that, but rather rejoice because that your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Uh, I'm Glory telling you, church, that we're not defeated. And Glory. sometimes you just need to turn around you look the devil right straight in the eye and you say, preacher, I'm not so sure I want to do that. Why don't you just tell him, devil, one day you're going back into hell while I'm going to heaven. My name is written on the Lamb's Book of life uh, and devil you can't never go there so can I just remind you you're the loser I'm the winner come on church uh, we are victorious tonight we are overcomers tonight by the blood of the lamb and by the word of our testimony I think it's time for God's people to stand up uh, and say God deliver us from the molly grubs uh, God deliver us from complaining uh, God deliver us from all this unhappiness uh, and God deliver for not being content and let us go back and say I'm going to love him I'm going to worship him he's my everything he's my all in all and as long as I have Jesus I have everything I need 
Hallelujah. Thank you. Can we grasp a hold of this? He's everything I need. He's all I need. He's all I need. I go back to Isaiah chapter 53. He was wounded for my transgressions. He was bruised for my iniquities. The chastisement of my peace was upon him. And with his stripes, I'm healed. He's all that I need. He's all I need. Friend, he's everything that you need. If the devil wants to distract us and say, no, you need this, you need that, no, what we need tonight is Jesus. What we need tonight is Jesus. Can I ask you, how many of you have things in your life tonight where that you say, Pastor, what I really need, I just need Jesus. Nobody else can do it. I just need Jesus. Thank you for your honesty. I just need Jesus. That's what I need. I need Jesus above everything. I just need the Lord. There's things right now that I'm going through, but Jesus is still the answer. I'm going to share this with you, and I want you to please listen to me because this is something that God has been teaching me. And I've learned a long time ago whenever God goes to teaching me something, it's because that I need to share it with other people. There are people that are dealing with things in a very repetitive manner. And what the Lord has been dealing with my heart upon is a true repentance. Not a general repentance. Sometimes things go on in your life that you may be embarrassed over. Okay, you may be ashamed of. And you don't want nobody in the household to even hear you pray and confess those things. But the passage of Scripture, God has just just really rung into my heart and into my spirit is this. In 1 John 1 and 9, he said that if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So what does that mean, preacher? God does not want you to come to him in a general manner. All right? If you've lied, then you need to tell God, I've lied. Amen. Come on. If you have problems with pornography, you need to tell God, God, I confess unto you, I have problems with pornography. Come on, it's going to get a little better here. If you're looking at somebody else's husband or wife, you need to be saying, God, I know that it's wrong to even desire the companion of another person. I need you to forgive me. I need you, Lord, to forgive me for coveting another man's wife. Coveting another woman's husband. I need you, God, to forgive me. Oh, come on, preacher, get back to that deliverance part. I'm trying to tell you there is a plan that God has. And sometimes what you and I must do is come clean with God. Come on. Maybe, maybe it may be something where that you're not forgiving somebody. And tonight you just need to say, God, I am still holding things in my heart I should not have. God, I hate them. You know I hate them. Preacher, do you want me to tell God already knows you hate them. You're not hiding it from him. God, I have malice. God, I am envy. I have envy in me. I am jealous. I'm talking about coming clean with God. Come on now, you can come to church and pretend like you're righteous in front of everybody else and nobody else will know. But whenever you're bowing in the presence of an almighty God that knows the thoughts of your mind, That's right. God knows you. God knows you. And I, I believe this with all of my heart. There's been a lot of people that has been healed and delivered because they come clean with God. Amen. God was able to do a work in them. I don't know what God's going to do here tonight, but this is what I feel like I need to do. I want to ask everyone that really needs God to do a special work in your life. I want you to come and just stand here. Come on. I don't care if it's spiritual. I don't care if it's physical. I don't care if it's mental. 
I don't care if it's financial. Whatever it may be, you need God to do a, a work in your heart, a work in your life. I need God to really move. I'm coming clean with God tonight. Coming clean with God tonight. I want to tell you, I need God to move in my life. I need God to move in my life. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. And right now, preacher, we need some music so nobody hear what I have to pray. Friend, you can talk to God from your heart. But you've got to come clean with God. You've got to come clean with God. It is a proven fact that the depth of our repentance will determine the depth of revival that we will have. Even in our own personal life. And I believe that a lot of times it makes God sick to his stomach to see people come down with such general repentance. God, please forgive me if I have done anything wrong. What do you mean if you've done anything wrong? Mm -hmm. You know good where you have. You know if you've lied. Come on. You know if you stole something. You know if you've been covered in your neighbor's new truck. You, you know these things. And you just need to come honest with God. The first thing I want us to do, I want you to start praying. Because this is a prayer in between you and God. And I just want you to pour your heart out into God and just say, God, I want to be everything that you want me to be. So, Lord, I need you to purge me. I need you to cleanse me. Father, in the name of Jesus, you see this body tonight. And I know, God, that you're in this house. And, Lord, I am doing my very utmost, Father, to be sensitive unto your spirit right now. But God, tonight, Lord, you see the purging and the cleansings that need to come into our hearts. Lord, the things that have, that have held us from getting closer to you, the things that, God, that have stopped us from really receiving the blessings, God, that you desire for us to have. Father, many times, Lord, we've not been like Joseph who said, well, I'd rather go to jail. Oh, God, we, we thought, well, there's grace and there's mercy, and we'll just get forgiveness later. God, forgive us of that. But God, that has shown how much disrespect, how little love that we really had for you. Please, to God, for forgive us, Lord, for putting it off. And, and God, for helping us, Lord, to tonight, God, tonight, Lord, we're looking for that help to God to come back to you in true repentance and say, God, we're sorry. God, tonight I'm asking you to search our hearts because, Lord, in this, Lord, we're asking for the blood of Jesus to cover us. From the top of our head to the soles of our feet. We're asking for the blood of Jesus to cover us tonight. We're asking for the blood of Jesus to cover every thought of our mind. And God that our minds will be washed tonight by the blood of Jesus Christ. And Lord anything that is contrary. Anything that is ungodly. Anything that is unrighteous. That the blood of Jesus will wash our minds tonight. God, I'm asking you, Lord, to purge our desires for not all of our desires have been godly desires. Not all the desires have been wholesome desires. Not all those desires have been righteous desires. And God, we need you, Lord, to, to allow that precious blood of Jesus to wash our desires. And God, I'm asking you, Lord, to do it tonight. I'm asking you, did God, to move upon the people here. Father, we need a touch of the master's strong hand. And I'm asking you, Lord Jesus, will you just let that power of yours flow into this service tonight, God. I'm asking you, Lord, to let the power of God flow. For God, more than anything, Lord, we want you. More than anything, Lord, we need you. And God, that's what I'm praying for tonight is the Holy Ghost to move. So God, anything that would hinder a moving of the Spirit of God in this church, anything that would hinder a moving of your power in our lives, I'm asking you, Lord, to remove it. I'm asking you, God, to break down the barriers. The barriers, the God, that would keep us from receiving what we need from you tonight. God, the barriers, to God, that may stop us from receiving a healing or receiving that spiritual touch. God, that the power of God would move. And God, tonight would be the night where that the freedom, the power of God would flow upon us in the name of Jesus. Can I get some of you to place your hand upon Brother Carl? Brother Carl needs God to reach down and touch his body. He needs God to heal him. 
And I know that I serve a God tonight that can heal this body. I know that I serve a God that made this back. I know that I serve the God that knows where every vertebrae is supposed to be. God, Lord, you know how much cartilage is supposed to be in between them. My God, you're the God who can heal the fractures. God, you're the God who can touch us, and you're the God that can heal us. And I believe in the divine healing power of God. I don't know, dear God, just how that you're going to do it, but I believe you, dear God, to do it. I'm, out, I'm asking you, Lord, to touch my brother's body. God, that there will be a testimony that will ring out loud and clear. God, for the healing power of God, the healing power of God would be upon him, dear God, to make it completely whole tonight. Jesus, I'm reminded of the lame man. That lame man that had been there 38 years. But Jesus, you spoke one time and said, Rise, take up thy bed and walk. And Lord, he rose up from there and he began to walk. In the name of Jesus, let there be healing that will come to the body tonight. In the holy name of Jesus. In the holy name of Jesus. In the holy name of Jesus, in the holy name of Jesus, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Can I get some of you ladies to place your hands upon Christina right here with me? Come on, ladies. She has a special need tonight, but there's a special God who can give special care. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I believe. I believe in the power of a risen Savior. Lord, you said in your word that all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. And I believe that. I believe that God that you have the power, Lord, to, to speak peace in the midst of the storms of this life. I don't know how that you're going to do it. I just know that you're God tonight. And you're the God that it gives unto us the peace of mind that passes all understanding. And Lord, I think about your word because you said, My peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you, but let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. God, this is your word. We accept the command of the Lord Jesus Christ and we will not let our heart be troubled and we will not walk in fear. We will not walk in fear of torments of the devil, but the power of God will rest upon us and the power of God will set our hearts and minds free. I know that God, I know without a doubt, God, that you're the God that does this time and time again every day, Lord. As your people call upon you, that God, there is victory and there is deliverance and God, there is freedom. God, we receive that tonight in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, Lord. In the name of the risen Savior. In the name of the risen Savior, in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Oh, God in heaven, let it be your spirit and your power to God to flow through my sister tonight. In the holy name, in the holy name of Jesus, in the holy name of Jesus, in the holy name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Is there anyone else tonight You desire prayer? Grandson. Amen. Praise God. He, God's still God there too, isn't he? Uh, Yes. How many of you know that God still breaks chains? Yeah, How many of you really know God still breaks chains? I believe it. I believe that God breaks chains. Several years ago, I remember a young man sitting on a stage, and I believe it was in Orlando, Florida. And just before he sung the song that says, Now I have everything, he shared his testimony. And in that testimony, he told of how that he was addicted to heroin and all these other drugs. But Jesus passed by. Jesus changed the heart. That's what needs to take place. That heart needs to come back to Jesus, don't it? Lord, 
We believe. We believe. We believe, Lord. We believe. I believe tonight, God, that our prayers can be effective right here in Samson. And God, right there where that He is at, Lord, the power of God can move to break the chains and to break the strongholds. God, I'm asking you, Lord, to break the chains tonight, Lord, that this heart, this heart that God will desire to come back. It will desire the presence of God. My God, that devil is doing everything he can tonight to blind his eyes and to put him in bondage. But I declare that the blood of Jesus breaks every stronghold. The blood of Jesus breaks every chain. And it's the blood of Jesus that can set his heart and his mind and his life free. I'm asking you, dear God, to do it, Lord. I'm asking you, Lord, to do it tonight. I don't know how you're going to do it. I just believe in the power of God that does it. God, hear the prayers. Hear the prayers to God of this grandmother. Hear the prayers to God of this church tonight. Father, for we believe. We believe to God. We believe. We believe tonight. The power of God is greater than any addiction. The power of God is greater than any stronghold. The power of God is greater than anything the devil ever has. It is the power of God. My God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that you may ask or think. And my God, the Bible declares unto us that you're the one that has all power in heaven and in earth. God in heaven, let that power be upon this young man tonight. God, restore unto him that which the devil has, has stolen from him. God, restore it. Restore unto him. That God, restore unto him. Restore unto him tonight. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Audrey, you feel like stepping up here. I just feel like I need to pray for you tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, by the stripes of Jesus, the stripes of Jesus, healing, healing is ours, Lord. Healing is ours. Oh, God, I serve the Lord God that touched Moses' body and he was 120 years old. And God, his strength was still there. His vision was still there. My God, I believe in tonight, Lord, for the touch of the Master's hand. God, that you would reach down and touch this body. God, you know, you know, you know the need. And my God shall supply that need. My God shall supply that need. It's your word. You're a God that cannot fail. You will not lie. But then, oh God, you will honor that word tonight. You will honor that word tonight, God. You will honor that word. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Brother Moses, I'm going to pray for you. But I want to pray and ask God to give you faith. Faith to move mountains. But we know that he's the healer, don't we? God, give us the faith. Give us the faith to believe. Give us the faith to receive. God, faith touches you. And then, God, you touch us. Father, it's not just Brother Moses that needs you to God to touch us. Faith. God, there's many here tonight. Father, Lord, we cannot look at these things as being hopeless. And tonight, God, I'm asking you to touch my brother's eyes that he will see them as a chance and an opportunity for God to work. For God to move. God, what that devil has meant for our harm, God, a miracle will turn. And the glory and honor will be given unto an almighty God. I'm asking you to God to give my brother faith for healing. God for the salvation of his children and his household. I'm asking you to God tonight to touch him. Lord that he will be that man of faith. God to believe. God to believe. God the Bible said that if we can believe that we will receive. In Jesus' holy name.
In Jesus' holy name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Is there anyone else tonight you desire prayer? Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Let me tell you what I feel like I just need to tell you tonight, church. The results of your prayer is going to come depending upon your obedience. If you'll obey God, God will honor His Word. He'll do it. Jesus spoke unto the men that He had prayed for that had leprosy. He said, go show yourself unto the priest. As they went, they were healed. They obeyed the Lord. What about the centurion that came to Him and said, Lord, my servant is homesick. And the Lord said, well, I'll just go and heal him. He says, no. You speak the word. And the Lord marveled at his faith. And he went in faith believing. God healed him. God healed him. I'm telling you, our obedience will open up miracles. Obedience will open up miracles for your life. I, I believe that. If you will obey God, there is nothing impossible with God. But you've got to obey God. You've got to obey God. Father, I want to thank you for Lord by